Hey guys, this is Songbird. Uh, you can see there's a lot of stuff around me. I'm gonna do a lot of videos today, uh, sitting here in the sunny Georgia heat. In this video, I'm gonna go over my worn items that I'm gonna be bringing with me on the AT this summer. First, as you can see, here's my favorite beat up hat. Where I put my flashlight on it, you can see that there's been a significant amount of damage to the brim, but I'm gonna keep going until I'm done with the trail with it. This hat's nice, it's got the snaps in the back. It's got a fairly flat brim, so I get a lot of coverage over my glasses. It's always nice to have something over your glasses when it's raining. I don't like getting my glasses all wet and stuff. Cleaning them constantly is a pain. The hat has a thicker material here in the front and almost like a sweatband, which keeps a lot of sweat from coming down into my eyes. And of course, a hiker favorite is the trucker style with the mesh in the back so that your head doesn't get too hot. But if you have a really cool hat that you recommend, I will look into it, leave a comment down below. Uh, if you think it'll be lighter, cooler, and still hold my flashlight up and still have a wide brim, um, this hat's pretty much perfect except for how it looks, so... But if you have a replacement idea, let me know in the comments. Moving into the next worn clothing item is the trekking poles. I would count these as worn, like the hat, because it's always on me. It's not something like my underwear or my shorts, my socks. So there's some people who would say that it's not part of your uh, worn items and it's part of your base weight, but these are never riding in my backpack. These Black Diamond Alpine Carbon Cork poles have been really good to me. I've probably got... 800 or 900 miles with them. I never find myself using this lower grip here and I might cut it off on trail. But the cork handles have done really well for me as well as the straps being so nice and cushioned and wide. And I, uh, I find myself getting some calluses using them. And when I first start back on trail, I can get a little bit of a raw spot here from the straps, but that goes away pretty quickly. And I've had worse experiences with the straight up webbing straps. Go for something that has an actual like foam padded mesh kind of strap on it. One thing about these straps is how you adjust them. You kind of pull them in and out like Chacos, uh, where you adjust the straps on like Hiracha sandals and Chacos and stuff. Um, I've noticed that they get really hard sometimes to adjust, but sometimes getting them wet helps adjust them if I need to. But basically once they're in position, uh, you don't really need to do anything with them after that. I'm thinking about stitching them together and cutting off the extra fabric just because. Now there's a little bit of rust on the flip flops you can see there, but um, they've held up really well. I haven't had any problems with them opening or, or closing or popping open on their own. The tips there you can see are pretty beat up. This is my second pair of tips for these trekking poles over 800, 900 miles. Um, I am not very careful about my tips. I jab my poles into the ground a lot. Uh, I use them jabbed to the ground for my shelter. I, I've used them a lot. I've used them on road walks. I've dragged them when I'm tired, stuff like that. So. You can see, you can see over time they get a little bent, they get a little wonky. But actually what you can do is take an adjustable wrench at home or a big piece of metal or something heavy and knock these off. First you put them in some boiling water and uh, heat them up so it's easier for them to come off. They're actually like press fit on there. And I think for like eight bucks or something like that you can replace these tips on here and that's been really nice. It adds to the longevity of the poles. It sucked to have to replace the $120 or whatever they were hiking poles just because the tips got dull. Now, a lot of people take the baskets off of their pole, but I found these black diamond tip baskets to be just narrow enough that they don't get in my way, they don't bother me. And in softer soil, um, your poles will go really deep. And I like that they stop when they hit that that basket there. So moving on to my shoes, I'm going to be using the Cascadia 12s again. I really like these. These are the non-Gore-Tex normal version. They have a very nice wide toe box and very grippy soles that I have found work very well for me on trail. These shoes are definitely durable. They definitely last. Uh, you're supposed to change your trail runners out every 500 miles or so, and I've been doing that. But the shoes definitely have life beyond the trail as painting shoes, yard work shoes. They're not completely blown. Here's my old pair. You can see that they're still pretty nice and intact. These shoes have only seen about 250, 260 miles or so. So they're not near that 500 mile mark and I'll probably use these on day hikes and stuff around here. But you can see there's a little bit of wear to the sole after 250 miles or so. One thing about your shoes on trail is that they're probably gonna get really stinky, especially where there's a lot of foam and padding and things. So you're gonna have some really smelly shoes at the end of a couple hundred miles. That's something that I've found to be pretty unavoidable. Uh, my feet smell pretty bad. You can always throw them in the wash and dry them in the sun and um, and they should be good to go to give you a lot more service. Uh, just the last pair of shoes I had, I threw them out because I got into the car uh, where my parents picked me up from the trail going up to my cousin's wedding in New York and they smelled so bad that I couldn't even really keep them in a plastic bag or anything and my 
dad just gave me a pair of sneakers and told me to throw mine out, so I did. So if you can see the back of the shoes here, there's Velcro on this pair, and there's not Velcro on this pair. What I do is I super glue a Velcro patch and I cut the corners. I'll show you that in another video, but that's one of my trail prep things with my new shoes. I like to uh, have them work together with my gaiters. Uh, my gaiters have a little uh, female side or a, a loop side of the Velcro patch that um, sticks to the male or the hook side of the hook and loop here on my shoes. And that helps me keep my gaiters in place uh, without having a uh, dedicated like built-in gaiter trap on the back and i really like that and uh, again i'll show you that in another video so here are the aforementioned gaiters these are dirty girl gaiters i really like these they're a spandex weave and of course i went with the july 4th american flag colors it was july 4th when i started southbound through the 100 mile wilderness with my buddies so i thought you know getting these as soon as i had an opportunity I thought american flag was kind of cool and appropriate these gaiters work with your shoes to keep rocks and dirt and you know grit out, uh, keeping you from having to take your shoes off all the time. And like I said, I'll show you that in the next video where I'm gonna be putting the Velcro patches on and show you how the gaiters work together. But I count this as worn clothing. These are always on me during the day. Uh, they're always protecting my shoes. Even if I don't have them secured, I'll pull them up out of the way if I'm taking my shoes on and off. The next item of worn clothing is going to be my single pair of light cushion smart wool hike socks. I have only one other pair of these that I'll probably end up taking with me instead of this pair. This pair looks pretty good, but it has seen 800 miles on the AT. The only place you can really tell is there at the top where the elastic's kind of blown out. Everywhere else, the elastic's fine, the socks are thick, there's no holes in the bottom of the sock, and I've been really impressed with these socks. These are one of the only pairs of socks that I've worn uh, with these shoes and not gotten any blisters ever. They don't give me blisters when my feet are wet, they dry well, and I just really like them. My next thing in my worn weight category is gonna be my boxers. I played some sports in college and I worked as a mover for a year and a half and I found that with a long period of uh, high activity, I really need compression shorts to protect my thighs from chafing. As I'm more physically active and as I get more exercise, my thighs actually grow instead of shrink. They get very muscular and, and uh, when they're pumped during the day, they rub against each other. And I've actually worn through pants. These uh, ex officio boxers, I got a, in small, a size smaller than I usually do and nine inch inseam. So they're pretty tight and they kind of act like compression shorts. I started out the trail with a pair of white Under Armour nine inch inseam compression shorts that did really well but they trapped a lot of heat and they got kind of stinky because they're a synthetic material and they kind of just held on to the germs and stuff. I've found these ex officios to act almost as well as compression shorts because they're a size small, though they are getting a little stretched out now. These have seen probably 600 miles or so on the AT and there's a little bit of pilling in some places, especially between the legs in those high wear areas, but honestly they've held up better than I could have ever expected. Here is the only place where I get a little bit of chafing in, on rainy days in these right around where the uh, inseam meets the uh, thigh area. I will say that the pouch on these for guys is pretty good, but uh, you will have to make some adjustments throughout the day. It's not like a pair of my package or those kind of keyhole boxers that kind of have a separate pouch for your manhood to ride in, but this is what has worked best for me on the trail so far, and I find that they're easy to wash in town and they dry out really quickly when they get wet. When it's raining, now I don't have rain pants anymore, but I have a poncho that comes down to just above my knees, and when it's raining, I can take off my shorts or anything else that I'm wearing, and I can just be in my boxers. And if my boxers get wet, they dry out pretty quickly. They're like a base layer almost. And then when I'm in camp, I have those dry shorts or whatever else I'm wearing to throw on and uh, keep myself comfortable and have something dry to wear in camp. The next worn item is gonna be my North Face Better Than Naked shirt. I absolutely adore this shirt. It's a running shirt, and I've been using it for uh, the better part of the last two seasons. It has held up very well despite how thin it is. There's really only one main area where my finger can go through it. Uh, it's where my pack straps kind of rub, and uh, I'm not too worried about it. It's not something that I've even tried to stitch together. It hasn't ripped further because of being worn or anything, so I'm just gonna wear this shirt until it falls apart, basically. This is discontinued, but I found the North Face running stuff to be absolutely amazing, and I really like how this shirt breathes. It doesn't really help too much when you have your backpack on, but if you can see here, you can see through that back panel material. It's a lot thinner, actually, than the material in the front. And I found that to be really good for when I take my pack off for breaks or if I take my pack off when I get to camp. My back is often very wet and sweaty. 
from where the pack has been sitting right up against it. So having that mesh, very fine material on the back that still protects me from the sun, but dries out very quickly is super nice in these running shirts so that you're not wet and having to wear damp clothing in camp when the sun goes down and the temperature drops a little bit. The next item of clothing that I'm pretty sure I'm bringing with me this summer, but for obvious reasons, I'm a little hesitant to do so, is a hiking kilt. Now I've seen a lot of people wearing these and they always look so happy and they're always so pleased with the ventilation and the chafe free aspects of the hiking kilt. So it should deal really well with any sweat or moisture that does manage to get onto it. One of the problems I've had is that my running shorts, even how thin they are, get soaked with sweat and they kind of trap more sweat and heat into my underwear and I end up getting chafed by the end of the day. So I've never used one on trail before, but I think that this is going to be a really good option for me. If it ends up not working out for me, then I'm going to go ahead and just switch back to running shorts. I'll be able to have a cheap pair from Amazon shipped to me on the trail wherever I am to a post office or to a hostel. So I'm not worried about being able to get a new pair of shorts, but uh, I'm excited to try these out and uh, show you guys maybe if they're good or not. One nice thing about these that I kind of missed with the running shorts is having pockets. When you're in town, it's nice to have a place to put your wallet and your phone and all that that isn't in a sweaty back pocket in your running shorts. One thing that I was surprised to see is just how much fabric there is on these. And they're pretty wide and uh, it's, it's almost like a blanket at this length. So I'm thinking on the very hottest nights in Pennsylvania in the dead of summer, I can throw this over me as like the lightest possible blanket out of all of my equipment. And maybe even on the coldest nights where I'm pushing my sleep setup, this can actually be like a little extra bit of insulation maybe. I'm playing around with some ideas. At the very least, it's gonna be like a supplement to my pillow so that I'm not on the plasticky inflatable pillow anymore. So as always, a couple uses possible, a little bit multi-use maybe, and hopefully maybe an improvement over the hiking clothing that I've used in the past. My next piece of worn clothing, and yes, I count it, is the pair of glasses that I always wear on trail. These are some Oakley frame transitions and they've held up really well for me. They're very durable and I've really liked using them. One of the benefits of having to wear glasses all the time is that I always have my sunglasses on my face. I never really notice the sunglass lenses, but then in every single picture I have of myself outside, I see that they're tinted, even on what seem like overcast days. I've got blue eyes and my dad has actually had some problems with some sunspots, I guess they're called. He's been telling me that I, with blue eyes like him, need to wear sunglasses as much as possible to protect my eyes from the UV light and to protect myself from getting basically skin cancer on my eyeball. Um, I'm thinking about not taking it this year, but I normally wear a shockproof like Casio uh, G-Shock watch. I have been going watchless for a couple of months now and I really like it. But on trail, I don't want to have to whip my phone out every couple of minutes to see what time it is. And it's very handy for me to have my watch beep on the hour so that I know to drink water if I'm thirsty. So I may be bringing that out with me, probably will. Just it's nice to have the ability to keep track of your pace and get an idea of your performance throughout the day. That watch doesn't have anything fancy. It's just something that's really tough and rugged and uh, simple with a decently loud alarm and I haven't had to worry about ruining it. It's been in hot springs in Japan. It's been, you know, swimming in the ocean. It's been on the trail for months and it's never broken on me or had any battery problems or anything. So I'm, I might keep using it. My last two items of worn clothing that aren't on my gear list, my watch is, are a um, new addition. This is a stretchy band that's actually meant to be a full on headband, but I cut it up and I can untie it and use it to tie back a ponytail or I can use it like this to slick my hair back out of my face if I'm not wearing my hat. In addition, I'm thinking I might be able to use this cordage untied to expand the small piece of cordage that's stretchy on my face shield of my bivy. Having a little bit of extra stretchy cordage means that I can tent that fabric out away from my face and not have the mesh right on me, which hasn't bothered me in the past, but it will be nice to have some living space inside. In addition, when it's really windy, I could take those two pieces of cordage, tie them together, and wear them as a belt around my poncho to keep it from flapping around in windy, wet conditions. So fairly multi-purpose. If I don't like it, I can hiker box it or send it home or whatever, but uh, it fits around my wrist pretty nicely and I like it and I'm probably gonna hang on to it. And the last thing is, I'm probably gonna take this with me. This is one of my best friends on trail has given this to me. It's one of those bracelets. Uh, there's two different versions. This one's the ocean one, and then there is uh, one with uh, land. The idea is that sand and salt from every single ocean is in uh, some of these beads here, so that you have the entire world of oceans on your wrist. My buddy actually has the other one, and his is all of the continents. He's got uh, clay from every single continent, sand, silt from every single continent, in his bracelet and he wears that on his wrist. And I kind of like it because I don't really wear bracelets or anything, but it's kind of a special thing. He's one of my best friends that I've made on the trail and I still keep in contact with him a lot. 
and so I might be bringing this with me just because it's something from a friend and sometimes when I'm lonely on trail it's nice to have like little tokens or mementos things to fiddle with and uh, things to remember that you know you're not alone so guys including the hat and glasses and what's on my wrist that's all of my worn clothing and you can see in my gear list how much it weighs and everything but um, I'm pretty happy with it this is stuff that has worked for me in the past and the addition of the uh, new hiking kilt I think will be interesting and if not it's pretty easy to switch out clothes and stuff with Amazon and with mail drops so I'll just be trading back if it bothers me so guys that's all for this video in the next video I'm going to be modifying these backs of the shoes by adding a patch of velcro and I'm going to put on my gaiters and my shoes and show you exactly how that works and why gaiters are a nice thing to have if you like these videos, if anything about them is helping you out or giving you an idea of what you might need to wear or have with you on the AT, please go ahead and like and subscribe. Right now the channel is just kind of gear videos and packing videos and like what to bring with you kind of stuff. Also showcasing the gear that I have and what has worked for me. But now in like less than a week, I'm going to be flying to DC and finding my way over to the AT a little bit west from where I'm flying in. And soon you'll be getting videos like this, me setting up my camps, using my poncho tarp, how things are on the trail, the kind of people, and things that you experience every day. So if you wanna see stuff like that, keep following the channel and thank you guys for supporting the channel so far. We've been growing a lot faster than I thought we would. Also take some time to check out the links in the description down below. There's cool things like my blog and my Instagram page. But yeah, we'll see you in the next video.